Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I want to talk to you about 10 tips that you guys can do to improve the sound quality in your home theater. Now, some of these tips are going to be huge and make a big difference in your theater, and some of them may not do too much, but nonetheless, they are all proven ways to improve the sound quality in your home theater. But before we get started, if you're new to this channel or you've been here and you just haven't subscribed yet and you enjoy home theater and audio videos and reviews, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Please hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when the next video drops and leave a comment and like the video if you like this content. Let's get going. So tip number one is increase the thickness of the wire gauge for your speaker cables. And the reason you want to do this is because a thicker gauge wire equals less resistance to the current flow. When you're doing 30 or all the way up to say 100 feet runs of cable length, you don't want to be limiting that current flow by using a really thin gauge wire. It's just kind of like if you had to get a lot of water out to a really far place, you're not going to use a really thin diameter hose. You're going to want to use a thicker one because it'll get it there much faster. So it's kind of the same idea when it comes to speakers. So tip number two is use foam or speaker isolation pads for your speakers. Now this is going to apply for those of you who are using floor standing or bookshelf speakers. This won't apply for those of you who are using in walls like myself. But the idea is, is that you do not want to have those speakers moving at all. Those things have drivers in them obviously and especially if they have um, 12, 15, or an 18 inch subwoofer in them, they're going to be moving. You don't want that thing that's creating sound to be moving itself and you don't want anything in the room to be vibrating it because that can affect the sound quality of the speaker. So tip number three is rerun the room correction software in your receiver. Now this doesn't matter if it's Dirac, Odyssey, YPOW, you name it rerun the room correction every time you make a change in your theater. It can be as simple as like getting new carpets, putting up acoustic treatments, or something big like getting a new piece of gear, getting a new amp, or just upgrading speakers. No matter what type of change you make, big or small, you definitely want to rerun that room correction. And also you want to check to make sure that the results that it gets are accurate because sometimes when you're rerunning uh, this room correction, it can do things a little goofy, it can set the crossovers kind of weird, it can have the distances be really, really messed up, and that'll affect the time alignment of all your drivers. So you just want to go in and double check with, like, say, a tape measure or a laser uh, measure, and just make sure that it sets the distances correctly, it sets the crossovers correctly. Just double check, because it doesn't always do what it is supposed to do, and it can be kind of weird sometimes. So tip number four is use REW and then EQ if you have the ability to in your receiver or use some type of external DSP system like mini DSP. So we all know that the benefits of REW is that it just allows you to measure your speaker's response in the room. And then once you have an idea of what your speakers are doing, you can then use the built-in software in your receiver or a, an external uh, processor like a mini DSP to EQ out some of those high spots and even some of the nulls so long as they're not too deep. So tip number five is using better cables or upgrading your cables. Now I'm not saying you have to go out and spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on a single cable. Um, I'm not really into the whole snake oil of spending you know a thousand dollars on a cable and then noticing a night and day difference. But don't use the bare bone cheapest cables that you can go out and buy or the ones that come with your system or whatever piece of gear you're buying because usually they're not really that good and they're not built that well. Um, and especially when it comes to the analog cables which are more susceptible to interference with like say um, electromagnetic interference or radio frequency interference, you want to make sure that they have really, really good shielding. And generally you can go to the manufacturer's website and just check and see how they're built. You can see the type of shielding they use, whether it's a weave, whether it's you know a wrap, there's just all different types of methods on how to shield a cable, but 
Uh, just upgrading your speaker cables, your interconnects, all the connections in your system can actually make a huge difference in overall sound quality. So tip number six is calibrate all your speakers to reference level. Now this is a huge one and it can make a big, big difference to your overall enjoyment and the overall perceived sound quality. You wanna make sure that all the speakers in your system, regardless of how many you have, are all playing at reference level. And even if you don't listen to your movies at reference level, me personally, I only listen to about most movies at maybe negative 10, negative 15 at the low end, but you want to make sure all the speakers are playing at the exact same level so that when you get all those big dynamics you're going to hear everything and you're going to also want to make sure that you hear all the subtle things so you can't really hear everything well or have a cohesive sound you know experience if one speaker is playing louder than the other especially your main lcr speakers which are the most important speakers in your system So tip number seven is adding room acoustic panels or some type of sound treatment to your home theater. Now in a perfect theater, it's gonna be rectangular, it's gonna be longer than it is wider, but regardless of where you are and what type of system you have, what type of setup you got going on, if you have parallel walls and you don't have a lot of stuff up on them, you're probably gonna get a lot of echoes. And that's as simple as like, clapping your hands or clapping a block of wood together and just listening for that sound. If you have parallel walls, uh, it's gonna sound kinda twangy. It's a very unique sound, but you can check out my video on how to build DIY sound panels for an actual sound demo of what um, an echoey room sounds like and what it sounds like when you add panels to the room. You don't want the sound of those speakers to be hitting the walls, bouncing all over the place, and hitting your ear at different times because you're going to confuse that with the sound that's coming from the speaker with repeated sounds of that speaker hitting the wall and just bouncing all over the place. So by getting the room acoustics under control by adding sound panels or foam or even something as simple as like a carpet, a decorative carpet up on the, the walls can greatly improve the sound of your room. So tip number eight is make sure you set all the speakers in your home theater system to small. Now, you want to do this because you want all the low frequency information of your speakers to go to your subwoofers. Unless you have a speaker with a 15 or an 18 inch driver, it's a pretty good chance that that speaker is not a large speaker and is not truly full range. A full range speaker is capable of hitting 20,000 kilohertz all the way down to 20 hertz at the optimal sound pressure level. And it's pretty hard to do that with just one speaker. So that's why in general you have subwoofers so that the surrounds and the main speakers can be playing those highs and those mids, which they excel at. But in order to really play those lower frequencies very well and efficient and at a loud enough volume, you really need, you know, bare minimum a 12 inch, but in a perfect world that you're gonna have a 15 or an 18 inch sub. So make sure you set those speakers to small so that each speaker is getting the correct sound information that it is capable of playing at the SPL level that it needs to play at. So tip number nine is move your subwoofers around. So a lot of the times where we place subwoofers are not always the best place where they're gonna sound the best in the room and give you the optimal bass response. So a lot of people like to place their subwoofers directly in front, you know, one in each corner, or they'll do it staggered where one's in the front corner, one's in the back corner, or they do them where you got a subwoofer to, you know, each side of the center or on the outsides of the front left and right. Um, and for your room that may work, but if you move it around, it may sound a lot better. So the idea here is you wanna set up a track that you're very, very familiar with. So a song that you know very well, you know how it should sound, something that's got a repeating bass line and just play it on repeat. And 
listen to where you already have it and sit in your sweet spot and listen to it and then move it. Now you may have to do this 10, 15, 20, 30 times. So it's going to take a couple of hours, but you'd be surprised how much you can improve the overall bass response in your room just by moving the subwoofer or doing the subwoofer crawl. So tip number 10 is positioning your speakers correctly. So make sure that when you are setting up your system that you position all the speakers correctly in the right place, right spacing, and get the right angles. Now, this is dependent upon what type of speaker you're using. Some speakers are a little bit more forgiving when it comes to placement. If you're using, say, for example, um, coaxial type speakers that have the tweeter inside the mid-range driver, like Kef, for instance, which is what I use in my theater, those can be a little bit more forgiving, but um, horns or um, even just standard speakers that just have a normal tweeter, those can benefit greatly from having them positioned properly. You can go to Dolby.com and pull up their guides and they will show you everything from a 2.1 all the way up to a 9.4.6 system. And it'll show you exactly how you should have them positioned and what angle you should have them positioned at so that you'll get the optimal sound playback for your system. And so there it is, that's 10 tips that you guys can do to make improvements in your home theater system. Let me know in the comments down below which one of these tips made the biggest difference for your home theater. And if you think I forgot any, put those in the comments below as well. Until next time, thanks for watching and happy listening.